G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday morning here in Australia, market up ever so slightly, so we're at 2.14 trillion on my last video. Now we're at 2.43 trillion, so you know, again a very tiny move, overall 1.4% up, not a whole lot. Again, a bit of sort of ranging, but yeah, you know, my suspicion is that we're going lower, uh, and I'll get into that shortly. It doesn't mean I'm panic selling anything, because I think we can go substantially lower from here, but I think it will be a gradual sell-off and then one big kind of uh, sort of semi-flash crash going downwards and brings us back up. I'll show you what I mean soon. Again, I'm not panic selling anything at the moment. I will continue to buy. I believe we are going up in the sort of more mid uh, term, but I think in the short term we might be going down. So over the next maybe sort of six weeks or so, I think we can definitely go down. But again, I'll get onto that shortly. All right, Bitcoin dominance uh, fell ever so slightly, still sitting just under 40%. A little bit of volume there, but really not too much at all. Bitcoin price, again, we got up to nearly 51,000. Now we're down at 50,000. Again, we keep sort of setting in lower highs at the moment, and that's really what I'm looking at. And gas fees, uh, $8 for a basic transaction uh, is pretty cheap for Ethereum, but, you know, not cheap enough and i won't go on about that anymore all right as we can see there's a bit of green here because the market's moved up 1.4 percent so there's going to be some coins that have done well i mean luna just continues to go it really is doing extremely well but what's performed the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100 oh wax had a nice move now, unfortunately, I didn't have any money to buy more wax at the cheaper price, but it's still a lot cheaper than what I originally bought it at. So this is something that I will continue to uh, put money into. Is the sorry the metaverse plays? Uh, I bought you know most of them at all time highs. They're still down considerably when I bought them, and I'm happy to scale in. And that's why you never just dump everything in because you never know what's going to happen. I will continue to scale in. But they are considerably down from where they were. And also a couple of DeFi plays is what I'm really looking at at the moment. All right, but 24% from Wax is nice. 23% from Near, Pro Near Protocol. Cadena, Cadena making a nice uh, bit of a pump uh, up considering it's come down a little bit. So look, some nice gains there, which is good. And Chainlink uh, making a bit of a move. There is some talk about uh, Chainlink getting some institutional adoption and things like that, so... There's definitely still positive news out there, but I just, yeah, my gut's telling me that we're going to go down. Again, I hope I'm wrong, and we will get into that very shortly. So they're the movers. Again, double-digit moves, uh, very nice. Anything above 15% in a bull market in 24 hours, I consider a good move. But what about the losses? There's going to be some. So there we go. Helium down a little bit. Olympus down a little bit. Bitcoin SV down a little bit. Basic attention token, BitTorrent. But look, very, very minor kind of moves to the downside you know, 8%, 3%, you know, one that nearly made 2%, that's Helium Network, uh, and then a couple that only, uh, and then, a f you know, there's a few, but they're really only very low single-digit losses. So the losses aren't too bad at all. Now, here's what I want to show you. Here's my Bitcoin chart, and this is what I've mapped out, and this is what I think is, you know, not it's going to happen, because I could be wrong, and look, I hope I'm wrong, but this is just my sneaky suspicion. There's still people that are, you know, of the opinion that we're going to have this, you know, major pump in the next kind of couple of, you know, maybe weeks into January. And that's probably more the, that's what I would say more people are leaning towards. And that's what makes me think that's why it won't happen. So this is what I think happened. When we want to break this $53,000 mark, that really, you know, gets us all a bit excited, you know, that, all right, sweet. The bull market is back on. Not that I think we're in a bear market. I think we're just going to have corrections. So I think we break over 53,000, drop back down, get up to nearly 53,000 again, drop back down. I think we're going to cover this $46,000 range again over the next few weeks, called leading in towards the end of the year. Excuse me, we know there's companies that will probably start to take profits. Now, not all of them, but some of them will, and it's going to create some panic. And I think we then dip down into this forty sort of two thousand dollar range. We come back up to around forty sort of seven forty eight thousand. Everyone thinks, "Oh no, that was it. That was the final dip." And then I think we have one more that unfortunately comes down into this thirty three thousand dollar mark. And the reason I think that is because of this. We have a CME gap here. 
and I just get the feeling like there's going to be something big and crazy that's going to come down 33 and a half sort of thousand dollars thereabouts it doesn't have to come right down to the bottom it can just kind of wick into it really but I think it'll probably come around about halfway so I'm going to say what is that halfway 33,500 thereabouts and we get a v-shaped recovery from that so that's what I'm thinking now again I hope I'm wrong I don't you know it, i'm not like completely sold on this that it is going to happen but it's just my gut feeling says we're going to come down lower because too many people think we're still going higher and there's going to be plenty of stuff that want to shake people out of the market now whether it plays out over this kind of time it could be something more severe that happens in the next few days or something i don't know but this is what i'm looking out for now as i said i'm not panic selling anything I don't think we're in a bear market. I just think we're in a bit of a sort of local top and we need to shake out some more leverage. And again, the people that are in cryptocurrency at the moment who aren't really sold on it, they're here just to make a quick buck. They're just going to flip everything as soon as it doubles or triples, like they're going to take all their money out. They're not really believing in crypto at all. They're not true investors. They are simply speculators. The market will do what it can to get rid of those people. So that is why I think something like this probably happens and why I think something probably gets us down here to close this CME gap. And that will really have people panicked and you know have so many people sort of sell and that is when I think the institutions will really start to gobble up, you know, the good quality stuff, you know, the the stuff that's no good, then that's just going to tank, you know, no matter what. But the good quality stuff, you know, if people sell Ethereum, people sell Bitcoin, you know, Solana, Terra Luna, things like that, they will be gobbled up. Now, again, none of this is financial advice. This is always just my personal opinion. I've been wrong before and I will be wrong again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not some, you know, I'm, I can't predict the future. I'm not a savant. This is just what I think might happen. And so for me, I'm buying, but I'm keeping cash on the side. I'm, I've got, I'm putting more into cash at the moment. So my sort of weekly fortnightly money that I'd normally put in, I'm leaving it in cash and I'm just kind of chipping away at a few things here and there because if we do go down to here, I want to have cash on the side to buy that up. But look, if it doesn't and it only turns out that we sort of come down to here and start to make a move up or we don't simply go uh, down and we do make our way back up, then again, I'll just continue to buy in. I've got my bags packed. I've got, you know, good positions in most things other than some of the metaverse plays, things like Wax and Sandbox, things like that. I definitely want to have better positions and I will work on those, particularly if they're coming down. I don't mind buying things at great discounts. I don't want to be, you know, going too heavy into things at all time highs. Now, again, the metaverse stuff, like I said, I didn't have a choice. I'd kind of missed it. So I had to start a position somewhere. Just so happens I started a position at the all-time highs, but they have come down uh, quite significantly, so they're the things that I'm going to be focusing on. But also some DeFi plays. Uh, so things like, I still believe in synthetics. Synthetics is super cheap now compared to where it's been, so that is what I will, again, I'm not going all out, I'm not going crazy. There's still issues around regulation and all the rest of it with synthetics, and I've got a pretty good bag, but at these prices, I want to get some more. And Aave, I still think big things are going to come from Aave. But again, I wouldn't be chucking all my money into anything at the moment just in case this happens. I would be just, you know, picking the projects you like and just, you know, kind of chipping away at them, keeping a majority in cash on the side for if this is going to play out. Because really, you know, if you can scoop some Bitcoin up at 33000 and this is the bottom, then that is basically half price from the 70000 that it nearly got to. So again, if you can buy Bitcoin at 50% off, that's great. But again, I wouldn't even be chucking all my money in here. I would still just be scaling in in case we are in a bear market and this continues to go down because no one knows exactly what's going to happen. We're all taking, you know, some people are just taking random guesses and picking stuff, you know, plucking things out of nowhere. And, and I guess, you know, in some ways you could say I'm doing that because I don't have any kind of, there's no statistical proof or something that says this is going to happen. It's just my gut feeling based on things I'm seeing. So I don't want to say I'm just plucking stuff randomly out of nowhere. But like I said, I'm not 100% sold that this happens, but I just have a sneaky suspicion something like this might happen. So don't go chucking all your money and be careful. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Now, here's reasons why I'm not completely sold that this is going to happen. This may be completely out of the question and we're getting ready to pump really sky high. So 
$91,477 worth of Ethereum, <laughs> nearly $400 million, were transferred from exchanges to Three Arrows Capital Wallet in two days. So the dip was being bought. And it feels like, you know, that kind of $30,900, $4,000 level is a good buy. But again, these big companies, they haven't thrown all their money and they got plenty of money sitting on the side and they will buy on the way down. Unless they think things have really turned, and don't get me wrong, they're gonna you know, take some profits with that, which they've already got. But it was not that long ago, you know, Sue Zhu, he came out and said he really uh, was disenfranchised with Ethereum. And, and look, he still is a little bit, because look what he says here. Look, I couldn't let you guys, <laughs> excuse the language, jerk off watching the burn without me. Ethereum L1, still unusable for newcomers. Show it to your grandma if you don't believe me. And it's true. Newcomers will not want to touch Ethereum. It's just too expensive. Or they'll buy it at first, but then when they pay the gas fees and if they even understand it, and all of a sudden they've lost, you know, maybe half their Ethereum if they only bought, you know, like 50, 20 bucks worth or something, uh, they'll be out. Now, I'll bid hard on any panic dump like this weekend, obviously. 100K ETH is dust. And he says there's more incoming. So, you know, he bought nearly $100,000 worth of ETH and he's, you know, he doesn't think that that is really a whole lot of money. And look for him and his company, it's probably not. But this is what makes me think, well, maybe we're not going to see much more downside. Maybe this really was the bottom and things are getting ready to pump up. But even if they do come down, again, they, he already said that they'll continue to buy panic dumps and things like that. And something like this would be a panic dump and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have their buy orders already set for if something like this happens. So that's what you've got to remember, you know, you've got to learn to understand charts and you can't learn them perfectly and know exactly what's going to happen. But these are buy zones at the moment and you can just sell because there's a lot of confluence here. So these are places you could set buy orders. So right here, if Bitcoin falls down to, again, you can have it right at the top, so 47000 $850, have a buy order in, somewhere in between here. And then after that, where have we got some kind of confluence, support and resistance? Well, then it falls down to here. So, all right, again, you can put a buy order in for Bitcoin at $42,360, thereabouts. And then we go, well, where's the next place? Well, we've got a whole stack of it in here, support and resistance. So, again, you put another buy order in. Now, they may never get filled, and that's fine. If they don't ever get filled, I guess that's a good thing because it means Bitcoin's never coming back down to this price. You already, you know, you're only going to see upside. But you find things like this where there's a whole stack of confluence. Again, some support and resistance happening, some support and resistance happening, some support and resistance happening. All right, this is a place I want to put some buy orders in. The next one you do is you go down to about here, down to sort of 29,800. You know, in and around sort of this area here, another place to consider putting a buy order. But particularly where you have CME gaps, they're probably not places, not bad places to put in buy orders. So again, down here, and the scary one is down here. I mean, imagine uh, Bitcoin getting down to 24,000, you know, in the next sort of few weeks or month or so. That would be scary because no one's ready for it. So something to consider. Again, this is probably somewhere I would put a buy order in. Again, not expecting it to get filled anytime soon, but look if it does. I mean, you know, Bitcoin was at seventy thousand. You buy it at twenty three, sort of twenty four thousand dollars. You've bought it at a third of its old all time high. That is the way I look at it. I like to buy things at discounts. I don't particularly like to buy things at all time highs. But again, that's not to say I won't. Particularly if it's hit an all time high come down a long way and now it's getting ready to go back to a new all-time high that's what you call a breakout trade and the chances are it's probably going to go a lot higher but nothing's guaranteed in life all right let's move on reddit looks to expand ethereum crypto rewards rewards sorry to more communities so they picked arbitrum to help scale their program so again reddit massive massive kind of behemoth uh, on the internet and they've chosen ethereum and they want to reward people in Ethereum and they've gone with Arbitrum, the layer two scaling solution. Again, another reason why I'm super bullish on Ethereum, even though the fees are horrible at the moment, they are looking to fix it. And I mean, you can just look at something like Matic and we'll get onto that very shortly uh, and how well it's done. So here, one whale accumulated nearly a million Matic worth $2.1 million in a single transaction on Wednesday. 
Now, Matic has a conference coming up shortly and Vitalik's going to speak to it. Now, again, I'm, when I say this, this is just me taking a bit of a guess. This is kind of, you know, picking something out of sort of thin air, but I just get the feeling like maybe Ethereum, the main chain, is going to do something with Matic. There's going to be some kind of announcement. I don't, again, I've got, there's no basis on that. It's just, you know, he's speaking at it. Uh, and they're having this conference and a lot of people are waiting on things to happen. So maybe something like that's going to happen. Again, not, not, that's based on nothing. That really is just kind of, uh, I guess, you know, pulling, you know, things out of thin air, as they say. But that would be very interesting. And also just the Matic price at the moment. Again, just a couple of days ago, a whale picked up, you know, nearly a million Matic. And that might because this, this is that breakout trade that we're talking about. So that was its old all-time high. It came down and set a low. So again, it went from what two dollars, sort of sixty-nine, came down to what was that, sixty-two cents or something like that? Is that? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's versus UST. So yeah, came down to like kind of sixty-two cents from two dollars, and now. It's came up and it's broken out of this uh, line. And again, it's chopping around here, but it looks like it's primed and ready to go up. And guess what would make Matic really blow up? If all of a sudden Vitalik came out and said Ethereum is doing something, the main chain of Ethereum is doing something with Matic for layer two solutions and things like that. It's already looking like a breakout. Now these don't always play out. It is completely possible that uh, you know Ethereum, uh, Matic does something like this. Sorry, this comes back and falls down in here and travels sideways and maybe even has to come set in some uh, lower price point. And again, that's just a rough guide, particularly if something like this happens. But if this doesn't happen and the market starts to move up, then there's a good chance that we're going to see something more like that from Matic because it's already starting to break out. All right. Last but not least, central banks, central banks, central banks of France and Switzerland uh, announced successful trial of digital euro. So again, we all know these digital coins are coming, uh, and this is proof they've already trialed it. Now they did come out and said though, although the project was a success, central banks warned that significant rule books, contingency procedures, and monitoring monitoring capabilities were needed to ensure a success, uh, ensure the success of a CBDC. I, you know, I don't think they're sort of coming in the next few weeks, next year maybe, but I would definitely think more sort of late 22, early 23 is most likely where you're going to see a lot of these central uh, bank sort of digital currencies and things like that rolled out. They, you know, There's still a lot more work to be done. Now, I could be wrong. You know, we've got things like uh, USDC, you know, America could, could come out and say that is the new central bank, you know, currency. They could simply take it over. Uh, considering it's been around for a while, it already operates and works, but we'll have to wait and see. And I mean, this isn't big news that CBDCs are coming, but it just does go to show you that, you know, they're probably closer than what most people sort of think. All right, look, that's it from me. So again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news and I don't, you know, want people to think that, all right, he's saying this is going to happen. No, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't want you to think that. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if something plays out like this. Hence why I'm not throwing, you know, the cash that I have at everything right now just in case it does go lower. Number one, you always want to have cash on the sideline. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anywhere near as much as what I would like because I have been buying dips and things like that, maybe too aggressively, particularly if this plays out. But look, if this doesn't play out and we are ready to go up, then I have played it very well. Most of my cash has been spent and I've bought the dip uh, very well. But if this happens, then I probably spent a little bit too much too quickly. But again, I do have some on the side and I'm keeping more on the side in case this plays out. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You know, we've got some small gains there. Hopefully they continue, but maybe they don't. All right, I'll see you next time.